celebrate the joy we find in Jesus Christ. And today, we light the candle of love. Love is hard to find sometimes. There we go. Sometimes it takes a little bit of extra hardness to get some love in there. Love is like a candle shining in a dark place as we look at the light this candle we celebrate the love we have in Christ and today we also light the candle that represents the light of Christ this fifth candle represents the birth of Christ the flame of this candle reminds us that he is the light of the world and that if we follow him we will never walk in darkness but we'll have the true light of life. Ready? The four stages of man. 
Number one, first he believes in Santa. Secondly, he doesn't believe in Santa. Third, he is Santa. And fourth, he looks like Santa. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not here this morning to enjoy this, so uh, I'll do this again next week. <laughs> but, but Brandon, uh, y'all can tell your dad, BJ, you can tell your dad that he was the star of the show today. Amen. Matter of fact, his picture was in the newspaper. Amen. Twice, yeah. His picture was in the newspaper twice, and it was in, uh, what's the other thing where you get locked up? What's that called? The Gilbert. Gilbert once and paper twice. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to keep you long with that, I promise. Uh, I, I, I was studying about it today because everywhere I hear, I keep hearing, we want to have the perfect Christmas. How many has heard that? How many says that? You know, on television, uh, with the advertisements on the Inspiration Channel, they'll say it's going to be the best. This is going to be an advertisement of the show. I think it's the Waffles or Little House on the Prairie. This is going to be the best Christmas ever. And this is the perfect Christmas in the Hallmark Channel. Good Lord, they've been making Christmas uh, uh, a movies nonstop now for about a month or two. And I was about having the perfect Christmas. Well, you know what? There's no such thing in our life as perfect. Amen? You're not going to find perfect. Because I guarantee you there's going to be flaws, there's going to be problems, there's going to be things going on. But I had to look through the scriptures and I actually found the perfect Christmas. Isn't that cool? Micah chapter 5, verses 2 through 6. Let's look at this. I'm, I got it right here. Y'all keep your seats. Amen? So I want you to see this is our the perfect Christmas. Really? I mean, really? Really, read with me. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, and then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. That is the perfect Christmas. You gotta look outside yourself to see the perfect Christmas. You gotta look outside your family to see the perfect Christmas. You gotta look outside of your job. You gotta look outside of everything. Because situations change. There are situations that, that we don't like. There are situations that we can't do a thing about. There's things on our job we can't do a thing about. There's things, there's pressure, all kinds of stuff. You have to look outside of all of that. And this is how I find my peace in the times of trouble. I mean, let's pray. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you for this day, and I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to bring forth your word, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Bless those, Lord, that want to be here in Kent. Lord, bless those that are traveling. Bless them. Bless those that have, have uh, participated in other things that was necessary. I ask you to touch them right now. Minister to all of them in a very powerful way. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We thank you for the church said. Amen. 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 God's awesome. Amen. Now, 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 how many remember uh, this guy? How many, uh, yeah, how many can point one out? No, don't point anybody. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, the Grinch, you know, that's one of the most beloved uh, Christmas stories of all time. When it first came out, I think I was in the first grade when it first came out. I'm dating myself. <laughs> that's, you know, that's, so the Grinch came out before television did, didn't it? <laughs> Well, I told somebody the other day, I think I told John, I think I told him on Tuesday night, uh, my family, I lived in Pamela County and Mary, my family was the first family uh, to have a uh, rotor antenna and remote control. Did you know that? In Mary, back in the, back in the, in the early, late 60s, early 70s, we had remote control, and we a remote control TV, it was a nine inch black and white TV, and the remote control was, we took turns, stand up there at night, and did see, I'll change channel seven, go back to channel nine, Go to 12, now just to fine tune that. Go back to channel 9. So we would, that, was his, that was his remote, and then his, his rotor antenna was with held antenna. Okay, y'all have never had to do that. Y'all don't understand, but the rest of us, okay. All right, so now, here we go. I remember watching this, this movie, this, this little thing, and it just really struck me because the Grinch took everything. He took every smidgen of Christmas. The Bible says he took all the hoop hash. 
It took all the all the decorations. It took everything. He took he even took the little bit of cheese from the mouse. Remember that? He took everything from Christmas away from him. Everything that you could possibly want at Christmas, he took away from him. How many in here have got everything you possibly want for Christmas? Nobody, no hands are going up. How many in here, don't raise your hand, but how many here there's things you want for Christmas that you know you're not going to get? Amen? <laughs> there's things you really want. And I guarantee you, if I ask you what it was, it's not going to be items. It's going to be things that have to do with you and things that have to do with peace and comfort and, 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 and understanding. So look, he said, after everything was taken away, they got it that morning with nothing, everything from Christmas is gone. And he looks and he says this, this is so amazing to me. Maybe Christmas, the Grinch thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little more. Wow. Gifts and, and festivities are great, but they're not really great for a perfect Christmas. Matter of fact, everyone down in Whoville, the tall and the small were singing without presents at all. Amen? Because they knew. And he said, wait a minute. And that Bible's not the Bible. The thing shows his heart just, just went from a little bitty thing to great old big. And he went and carried all their stuff back because he realized it wasn't stuff. Because every time I get stuff, it wears out or I'll wear out before I wear it out. Amen? But you know what? Jesus Christ is one size fits all. Amen? So let's go ahead and go. I'm not gonna, I said I'm going to keep you long. And, and I haven't kept you longer than I intended so far. Okay, so here, so here we go. What we just read from Micah chapter 5, verse 2. Ready? The first thing, for the perfect Christmas. Watch this. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. The manger was built with sticks of wood, symbolizing his back against the cross. And now, and later on, his back will be against the cross. Watch this. It says he gives his people, the shepherd will give his people. I love this. It's so awesome. Well, for the perfect Christmas, he gives you strength. It says he will stand and shepherd in the strength of the Lord. He says that's what Christmas is about. Christmas is not about Christmas trees. And Christmas is not about uh, uh, who can do what. You know, uh, uh, I even see people in neighborhoods try to outdo each other. They try to outdo each other with Christmas lights. They try to outdo each other with Christmas presents for their kids. They try to outdo each other with whatever, the festivities. It's not about who's done what. It's not about festivities like that. What it truly is about, watch this. God knew, listen, God knew that we can't do this on our own. Has anybody ever tried to do it on your own? I have. I catch myself constantly doing it on my own. And God says, back up, big boy. You can't do this on your own. you got to have my help. you got to have me. I've got to be there. i got to be the one. If you don't have me, you're not going to be able to get it done. So look, here's what Christmas is all about. You can turn to God for strength, and he will, he will give you. He, listen, listen. He will give you strength. How many know you cannot handle this life on your own? Every time I think i got a handle on it, it gets harder. Every time I think i figured out the lay of the land, the map changes. Every time I think I got this person figured out, this person figured out, they change. Every time, whatever I think I got figured out, it's not at all. I don't have it figured out at all. But you turn to God for strength, and He will give it to you. You see, we got help. How many know we got help? We got help. We got Jesus Christ. He'll give it to you. The Bible tells us, it says, cast all your cares on Him, for He cares for you. That word, that word cast means, this is now, that word cast means to take a load and put it on a camel or on a donkey's back to so live and carry the load. That's what we're casting. And this would mean to go up and put it on somebody's back, on the back of a donkey, a dromedary, a donkey, a camel, and then it carries the load for you. And you walk beside it as it carries the load for you. Those of us in here right now are trying to carry our load by ourselves. If you try to carry your load, I know. So, here we go. You ready? 
the dromedary. Cast all your cares on him. Take your hurts, take your patience. How many got mighty army this morning? You know what mighty army said? Wisdom is nothing more than healed pain. Every time I got wisdom, it came at a cost. Every time I got wisdom, it started with pain. And then I learned from the pain. So wisdom is nothing but healed pain. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Watch this. Our weakness, or the weakness of God, is stronger than man's strength. Amen? The kind of strength that Jesus offers, no matter what happens, you can depend on his strength. He'll get you through whatever you got to get through. Our lives can uh, have to be characterized by failure, bitterness, missed opportunities, or things that have changed. Give your strength to face whatever comes your way. Give, your, give, give yourself to God, and God will give you strength to get whatever you got to get through. So number one, watch this. He gives you strength. Don't tell God how big your storms are. Tell your storms how big God is. I learned that. I have people tell me that, that you know, I, I get criticized all the time. I get criticized. I mean, how many here get criticized? If you didn't, if you say you didn't get criticized, raise your hand because I'm criticizing you right now. You better raise that hand. Everybody in here will be criticized for something. Amen. And I've been even criticized about times all through the years about how I handle things or how I just put it in God's hands and let God handle it. I remember uh, my uncle one time came up to me and my uncle said, you know what, you drive me crazy. And I said, how do I drive you crazy, uncle? He says, you don't worry about anything. I said, I've got a lot of things on my mind, uncle. And he said, no, you walk around carefree all the time. Like you just don't even care. And I said, whoa, I do care. He says, well, how can you walk around all the time looking like you're looking and acting like you're, like, acting, like you're acting? I said, it's because I choose to put my, my problems in the hand of God and let him handle it because I can't handle it. You know, I was just having a cold rant. I'm going to tell everybody. Somebody went to this night. Somebody said, can you explain intercession to us? God's intercession. I'm going to do that right now. How many has ever gone to the McDonald's or to a drive through window with kids in the car? <laughs> you had kids in the car or somebody in the car with you, especially kids, and if they hollered, they would holler all at one time, and so you couldn't ever get anything ordered. So what you did was you, you caught everybody down, and you went in order, and you said, now tell me what you want. Tell me what you want, and then you interpret what they're saying, and you pass it to the window, to the to the to the, to the speaker. Well, they want a they want a chicken nugget meal, four piece. They don't want fries. They want apples, and they want apple juice. All right, the next one. They want a six piece chicken nugget meal. They want fries, and they want a, a whatever, not the pepper. And so I'm sitting there hearing what they've got to say. I'm interpreting what they've got to say, and then I go, I in turn tell the person inside what they want through that speaker, and then we pull it to the window. What I asked for, I got. It. Guess what I've become? An intercessor. That's the purest thought for a child to have God intercedes for us. We tell him what we need, we tell, we tell Jesus how it's going, what we need, or we don't even understand what we need, and he goes to the Father and tells him what it is we need, and he handles it for us. Amen? So first, God gives you strength. That's, this is what Christmas is all about. It's not about the bells and the whistles. It's not about the cars and the trains. And look, it means I'm not alone. And watch this. I refuse to be a victim of circumstances in my life. I know people that love to play a victim of their circumstances. I can't stand it. It makes me so upset when somebody wants to play the victim card because I'm not a victim of my circumstance. I got victory over my circumstance through Jesus Christ. Amen? So look, look, you have a shepherd and you can live in the shepherd's strength. Amen? Look, look, it's so awesome. And you know, I, I, I know, I know that many of you are facing challenges right now that are bigger than you are. How many of you here would say, I'm facing something bigger than me? Amen? You know, you're in a battle. You don't have the strength to win on your own. Let me tell you what you do. Maybe especially on Christmas Eve, you don't have to do this alone. You've got God with you. I'm almost through. I've only given us one present. Amen. Look at that. That is sweet. 
He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Isn't that cool? Next, according to Scripture, this prophecy, it gives you security. It says, And they, his flock, shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth before eternity. Amen. How many know we live in an insecure world? Every time I turn around, there's something else happening. You know, uh, that Amtrak that got wrecked, that wasn't a terrorist attack. They said that he was distracted. You know, I sit there all the time and watch people distracted on the road and they're driving all over the place because they're busy texting or they're busy doing something else or they're having a conversation with the person in the car with them and they're watching the person, you know, uh, uh, who was it that came I'm trying to think of his name right now. Good Lord, I can't even think of his name. Somebody help me. The guy from Chalk Community uh, that, 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 uh, that sang on the King's Kid. Help me out. He's got a, a Laverne Trip. It sounded like a girl. <clears throat> Laverne Trip. I was riding with Laverne Trip to the church on Saturday to fix up the stuff in here for his sound system. The man was talking to me, and I kid you not, he drove on the 55, he drove 35, 50, 20, 45, 50, 30. He went over here, he went over here. I couldn't talk to him, I was so nervous. And he said, loosen up, brother. And I'm thinking, yeah. He says, it's okay, just talk to me like regular people. I'm thinking, well, how about you drive like regular people? Somebody from the church was behind us and said, their grandchild said, Say, 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 Mima, is that person drunk? Do we need to call the law? No, it was just he weren't paying attention to what he was doing. When we finally got here, I got out of the car. And, I literally got out of the car and kissed the ground. Thank God. So, so, so watch, watch. He gives you security. You don't have to worry about this. I'm telling you, you know, it's amazing to me how one simple word can change your whole day. One simple motion can change your whole day. One simple thing can just change everything. But see, Jesus offers security because he knows he's got us. I love the scripture right here too. It says, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the stray and I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak. So security. Amen? So look, he made this promise to us. And I love this promise. I think about, oh, very all of this. The tomb, oh listen, y'all, 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 this is awesome. The tomb was empty. The greatest security breach of all time. The tomb is even the greatest security breach of all time. That, yet, yet, that event gives us lasting security to all of God's people. Amen? So he made his promise, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hands. You see, he offers the kind of security the world cannot offer. And I'm sorry they all popped up, but I actually finished this at 2 o'clock. <coughs> I mean, so I was kind of going. I love that little bird that you put in the window with a little cup. <laughs> all right. right. Security is not based on things and circumstances. They're based on his greatness and never-ending love for you. There is no place you can go. There is nothing that can happen that extends beyond the power of God to take care of you. Amen. And here we go. Now we're closing. <laughs> okay, get ready. One more, one more. Here it is. I love this. Psalm 29 11. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Amen. Remember, peace is not the absence of conflict, peace is not the absence of problems. Peace comes from his presence in the middle of our problems. So here we go. Here it goes. He gives you serenity. How many could use some serenity? Amen. Every day of my life, I saw a lot of things. Especially when you get on the highway. Lord, give me some peace. Praise the Lord. You know, I just got hit in the back on a Friday. A couple weeks later on a Friday, I'm in the same spot where I just got hit. And I was turning in. Instead of coming out, this time I was turning in. And I was turning in. Here's the bank. 
and here's the parking lot for the theater, and I pulled in, and a guy in a great big SUV, I saw it out the corner of my eye, and I said, watch out, Dad. There's a stop sign right there. I had the right of way, and I'm getting ready to go, and I see this guy coming, and he's not going. I'm talking about he had to be going 45 or 50 in that parking lot. And I saw him, and I slammed on brakes. I threw everything that was in the seat in the floor. I slammed so hard on brakes. He flew by me. He almost hit me. And he would have hit me right in the side. And so, he, he, and I threw him a horn. He looked the other way, and he just kept on going. And I thought about that. And then, then not long after that, I tried to pull out. And I'm trying to pull, pull back out. The person behind me slows down. And the person, the other, the other guy pulls in. And they try to crunch me. And I said, Lord, you know, I'm already having a hard time, but I just got hit, and now I'm trying to get hit again two or three times. I'm not trying, but it's happening. But so I said, Lord, you know what? I got to rest in your peace, because if I don't rest in your peace, I will lose my mind. You know, when I got, almost got killed out here that day, and <coughs> the other guys did get killed, and, and the other ones got put in the hospital with their back, all that stuff, and all the scars tore up. For, for, for weeks, every time I got in my car, I saw somebody crossing the line. It just tore my nerves up. And I said, God, you got to give me peace. God, you got to give me serenity. And then God gave Bethany her permit. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, God, you have such a sense of humor. Because Bethany would not stay in the lines. <laughs> and I said, Bethany, we're gonna, I'm a girl, you're going to have to change now. You've got to stay in the lines, girl. But, but you know, again, God gives us serenity. Amen? He will give them peace. But he Listen, this is not a peaceful world. You know, uh, uh, just yesterday I read an article somewhere up in Philadelphia. A family put a manger scene out in front of their house in their neighborhood and put a big old sign saying Jesus with lights around it. And one of the neighbors got offended and talked to the housing association. The housing association came to them and said, you have to take that sign down. It says part of a Christmas decoration. Jesus, this is Christmas. And they said, you break into the rules. What it was was they, they had to offend somebody and they wanted them down, so they tried to find a way. And they said, we haven't done anything to offend anybody. It's about Jesus Christmas. And they said, take it down. Couldn't even put Jesus in their own neighborhood up on a sign. Just his name. In our in the United States. You know, uh, I walked into Walmart the other night and I was trying to find a manger scene and I haven't found a manger scene yet in Walmart. I look for a manger scene. As I walked over to the hall and I said, well, how, do y'all have any manger scenes? She says, no, and I had talked to the manager. said, you sure y'all ain't got any manger scenes? She said, no, nope, ain't seen one. And so they're sitting there talking to him. I said, how would you like to have a birthday party that had dignitaries and everybody invited? And they were going to throw one of these big shindigs for your birthday but they didn't invite you, how would you like that? They said, we would hate that. I said, well, when you don't have a manger scene at Christmas, and you don't have Jesus, Jesus is taken out of it, it's all about Santa Claus and all this other stuff, and, and I'm not trying to be, I'm not a religious person, I just want to see Jesus. I'm, I believe in salvation, not religion. But I told him, I said, he's having a birthday, and y'all aren't inviting him to the party. I don't want to do that. Amen? Okay, so here we go. Here we go. I'm trying to hurry up. Y'all looking like y'all ready to go, and I am too. Ready? <laughs> Amen. Jesus didn't come to bring, look, Jesus came to bring peace to all who follow him. So Michael says this. Look, here we go. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Now it's not my fault. It's the battery's fault. All right? Look. Here we go. Come on. Come on. I'm going to go and get on. There you go. How about that? There you go. Y'all read that and I'll go to the next one. Tell me you're through reading. I'm playing. <laughs> Jesus' birth was announced by the angels to say, Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace to men. Jesus was approaching, when he was approaching death, he said to his disciples, he said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. When he came into the world, they said peace. When he was going out of the world, they said, I'm giving you peace. Jesus came to give us peace. Even if we're not experiencing peace in the world around us, his peace is present. So watch this. I love this. The Gospel of Micah. Amen. He said, Jesus came into the world not to take away all the things that destroy our peace. Did you know that? He didn't come to take the stuff away. 
He wants to carry your burdens. He wants to lift your anxiety. He wants to take away your sins. The things that tend to make your life miserable are the very things you just came to take care of. That's what he wants to do. He wants to be our shepherd. He wants to give us peace. And so here we go. Get ready. This is it. This is the last slide, I promise. There's something written on it anyway. Ready? It's something to admit we can't take care of ourselves, isn't it? I go to nursing homes and I see people in nursing homes. I see people that once, you know, I was telling you I went to go went to, went to where Carolyn's at, and while I was in there where Carolyn was at, I was in there playing, singing, and 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 I was sitting there, and I won't get into all of who people were, but there was people I'd pastored all in there, and people I'd known all my all my life, a lot of my life, were in there, and I had somebody who honestly had been a spiritual giant to me. And I had learned so much from this person. So much. And I stood with this person. That person stood with me. It's amazing how much we had done together. How much we accomplished for God through His presence. God's presence. And that person sat across the table from me. And the songs that we used to sing, he couldn't remember the words. And he looked at me. And looked at the drink machine and said, Hey, boss man. He didn't know who I was. He said, Hey, boss man. Is my credit good here? And I said, Your credit's good with me anytime, any place, anywhere. He said, I sure would like a Pepsi. So I reached in my pocket, got the money, went to the machine, got him a Pepsi, and brought it back to him. He said, thanks, I'm all down. You see, there's things that can destroy your peace. I walked out. I weren't defeated at all because I understood they weren't him. But my heart hurt and ached because that spiritual giant, the one that we had stood foot, foot to foot, side by side, back to back, and battled many, many times, didn't even know who I was. Didn't know the songs. And just, and just wanted me to buy him a drink. There's a lot of things that can destroy our peace. But you know what? And it's hard to face the fact that our worlds are so fragile and so insecure. Do you know all it takes is one chemical imbalance in your body and all of a sudden you're a changed person? One chemical imbalance today, right now, just one small chemical imbalance, and some of us wouldn't even make it out of the sanctuary. That's how fragile our life is. We can get on a highway and a tire blow, or somebody else's tire blow, and we hit run into each other, and we're gone. That's how fragile life is. I had a friend that across the street from me in Williamston, a good friend of mine. And I hadn't seen his, I hadn't seen him in a couple of years, and I saw his wife a few weeks ago at the hospital with her mother. And I said, Well, how's your mother doing? She said, she's doing okay. And I said, Well, how's your family doing? She says, I'm doing better now. And I said, uh, better? Were you in the hospital too? She said, No. She says, Your buddy was going to sell his bike. And he went out on the highway, on the highway, but on right where I lived, Weaver Drive. He said, I just went down to the end of Weaver Drive, goosed that big bike. And she said, I saw him go out this way. And I turned around to walk in the backyard. And he, she said, I heard something crazy. And she said, I turned around, the bike had thrown him on the highway, and he died on the impact. He was my age. Life is fragile. But you can't live in fear. That's what Jesus came for. He came. It's impossible for us to create peace. We can't. And if you think you can create peace, it's only nothing but an illusion. There's two things that are illusion. <coughs> that you can bring peace and that you have control. We don't have control. We don't have peace without Jesus Christ. Amen? So if there was a child born, there was a child born in the manger, and now it's not just that day that has meaning, but now it has meaning in our lives also. You know, I sent a little text to, to, to the great children this morning. 
And that text, I know they wouldn't mind me telling you this because it was it's, it is, it's nothing real personal. It's just this. I said, I know this time of year is very sad for you, especially now you've lost your mom and your dad. I said, but instead of being, just change your focus. Instead of being sad because your mom and dad are gone, rejoice that now they are together once again and they're not worshiping at the foot of a manger. They're worshiping now in the arms of the Savior. Wow. And before I call this in, one of the Lord sat back and said, thank you so much. Peace without God is false peace. Control of anything without Jesus is false control. Amen? So now, here it is. Listen, this child gave us an incredible gift. That's a gift of strength, security, and peace. All the circumstances of this day, everything that's happened to us, God's got it. Amen? So now, watch this. DC, uh, DC BJ, I'll come up here. Here's what we're going to do. Before y'all start playing... We're going to sing happy birthday to Jesus. It's his birthday party. One little kid, I think D.C. asked me one time, said, how come, D.C. asked me, Christian, how come we getting all the gifts? He said, it's Jesus' birthday. <laughs> also, <laughs> also we were riding home from Benson one time, and, and, and they said, we were going to be there, Dad. Daniel said, we're going to be there. And I said, we're going to get there. And then DC said, when are we going to be there? I said, we're going to get there eventually. Just hold on. It was an hour and a half trip. Finally, finally, their mama said, it'll be okay. It'll just be a little bit longer. And then DC said, yeah, like one of dad's sermons. <laughs> Y'all stand up. We're going to sing happy birthday to Jesus. And then we're going to have altar. You want to have a birthday? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Ready? Here we go. Y'all ready? Happy birthday. 